Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, today's episode is an absolute banger but before we get into the episode, let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Ibadati. Ibadati is a company that provides premium quality prayer sets. You might not have enough space in your house to have a dedicated prayer room but with Ibadati and their sets, you can transform a corner of a room into a dedicated prayer space with cushions, prayer mat, Quran cover, all matching. Allah is beautiful. And if you message in time for Eid and you let them know that you came from Ramadan with the mandem, just DM them on Instagram, you will get five pounds off any prayer set of your choice in any color of your choice. Please do check them out. Really, really good quality products. I myself will be buying some inshallah for some Eid gifts. And uh, yeah, let me play the video. Then after that, let's get straight into the episode. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Amma ba'd, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Brothers and sisters, welcome to a very, very special and a very requested episode of Ramadan with the Mandem Come on family Aye, come on family Assalamu <laughs> alaikum What's it, what's it, mashallah So on today's episode, we've got, alhamdulillah, we've got brother Nasir, aka uh, Yarimi He's here in the building, mashallah, pleasure, pleasure, after a pleasure. very, very long time. Uh, we'll get into a little bit about, you know, the history, which I'm sure a lot of you probably don't even know. Uh, but this is, I think, the first time we've been on on a show together, right? We've not yeah, and we worked yeah. together for a long time, but it was behind the scenes. Very long time. It's now scenes. on the scenes. Yeah. We're on the scenes. But From behind the scenes to on the scenes, man. <laughs> we made it. It's good to have you here, though. Well, likewise, bro, man. Likewise. So, <laughs> let's dive straight into it. It's cool. Nasir, yeah. what was the first time that you ever recall coming into our co coming into contact with our da'wah, whether that's online or offline? Would you like a detailed answer or just a straight? Yeah, no, a detailed, detailed. Detailed, okay, cool. College times, um, I was in college and I was trying to better myself in terms of my deen. Growing up, alhamdulillah, I come from a family that pray five times, five times a day, etc. And they do um, as much as they can. However, I didn't really feel a connection as to what I was doing, so... The salah, like we spoke about yesterday, it was almost like a chore Subhanallah. and a really sort of virtue of it or the benefits of it um, in terms of how I feel. So then the, the, a few things happened in my life in college where life took a bit of a turn and got kicked out a couple of times and stuff. Um, so from then, it's like I was just listening to Quran every single day. <coughs> um, on the bus, I was like 17 at the time. So I would just be on the bus listening to Quran every single day and wearing a thobe. That's all I knew, just praying salah. So... Um, and how old were you? 17? Yeah, right? 17 at the time. So my little brother at the time, he used to go to um, um, take it back a little bit. Like when I was 15, 14, when I used to go to secondary school, my little brother would go to school, obviously. And some days I'd have to take him to school. So on the days I'd take him to school, I bumped into Muslim Bilal. Okay. Because his Who's daughter... Bumped into him? Yeah, his daughter and my little brother went to the same school. Okay. Well, Berwick, so... I saw Muslim Bilal and these times I was already about to make that transition from what I was doing before. So uh, I was listening to Muslim Bilal and I saw him like, Muslim Bilal, I listen to you, this is this, this. a super hardcore fan. I'm like, yo, I spit all your bars right now. Did you get it? Like this, that, the other. And then Allah Mubarak, like 
I told him, listen, I write stuff and all of that stuff. He's like, yeah, give me, take my email, send me some stuff, I'll listen to it. So then um, he gave me his email, sent him a couple of tracks, and then he just came to my house, like, the month after, picked me up from my house, spoke to my mum, took me to the studio, we recorded our first ever poetry together and stuff. And then from that day, because of what I was searching on YouTube, I was getting a lot of Nasiha Sessions recommendations. Ah, so, so you were searching MB stuff? Y- y- yeah. And then yeah, that led you to Nasiha Sessions. Videos. On that note, Guys, make sure you like this video and drop a comment right now below. It could be anything, whatever you comment, because look, the same way that video that you saw popped up on your recommendation, if you cause a bit of a hype around this video, this video will also pop up in other people's recommendations. So I think on Taha's video, we hit 150 comments. On this one, let's try to get 200. As for likes, hit the moon, inshallah. Yeah, so yeah, bro. Um, Video started coming up and recommended. But yeah, like it's just... I'd, so now it's college times. So I was trying to really trying to make a transition. You know, I had someone at the time just showing me. Even me and Jabs, we went to the same college. Even six five, but six five, I wasn't there when I was there. So it's like I would see a lot of Muslims in college, but we weren't really practicing. So for me, I'm not gonna lie to you. As much as the message of Islam came to me, the main message of Islam didn't really come to me in terms of you're taught at home. Don't get to my my parents. Yeah, they put me in madrasa, this, that. I was just always leaving madrasa and stuff like that. Do you get it? I never really, even when someone was teaching me, it was never really sinking in. So, yeah, someone at college was teaching me what tawheed, what shirk was. So I'm like, okay, cool, this is deep now. So then I started doing my thing. And then, yeah, so to skip, the first thing I ever saw, the reminder at the football tournament. And you're like, you have oh, to remind wow. yourself to blink. The person who yeah. disrespects his parents, what would he call him? Wow. Ungrateful, this, that, that, that. So what would you call the person who turns his back on the game the parents? Yeah. They were basically kufar there. They invited me to um as, you know that crowd was a crowd of mostly non Muslims. Yeah, I saw yeah. Football players. That's, see, the, that's, that's, that's the best video in my opinion you've ever made. Really? I should listen to that total. I listened to it yesterday, furthermore. What's the best part of that? So I know what to, which clip to put in. Um I'm not gonna lie, it, it finishes atheists and everyone, and at the same time it it, it instills something in the Muslims. And Ron said, um, what would you call a person who you know, his parents clothed him, they put clothes on his back, they fed him, they sent him to university. And at the end of the day, um, the person, he turns his back on his parents, he says, forget you, mom, I'm doing my own thing, this, that, and the other. And then there's all the English people, <laughs> the accents, ungrateful. i give you an analogy of a guy, and you know, his parents, they raised him, and they did everything for him, right? They clothed him. The father was working two jobs, the mum, she sacrificed her beauty when she gave birth. She kind of, you know, she lost her figure and all these things. And she gave all of her time to raising this one son. They put him through university. But then suddenly he grows up. And then, you know, he just comes back to the mum and dad and says, you know what, I'm not going to holler at you no more. I'm not going to call you. I'm going to go off and do my own thing. I might call you if I want to. But generally speaking, I don't really have anything to do with you no more. Have a good day, mum. And this mom and this dad did everything for this child. Now I have a question for you, very quickly. So work with me. How would you describe this individual? Ungrateful. What are some adjectives? Ungrateful. Ungrateful, right? <laughs> Ungrateful. Negative human being. This, that, and the other. You know what I mean? And then I was like, and then he goes. But my question to you is, then what do we say about the one who turned his back on the one who gave him the parents in the first place? The one who gave him his own life in the first place. If we say that a person who turned his back on his parents is ungrateful, and a person who turned his back on his parents is selfish and disrespectful, then what about the one who turned his back on the one who gave him life in the first place? And that really hit me, I can't lie. That was like, rah. Hey Allah. You gave me the ZK, I forgot. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So listen, so then obviously- but that's, but one sec, that's beautiful, that what got to him was Tawheed. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the, the, yeah. the asal of everything. And that's alhamdulillah, inshallah, as long as uh, we carry on the da'wah, the asal of our da'wah will always be tawheed, inshallah. Yeah. There's many sure. people out there, the asal of the da'wah is something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. They bring in, like, like politics is the asal of the da'wah. They'll bring in politics. No matter what they're talking about, yeah. politics will somehow find a way into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with us, we hope, inshallah, inshallah, that whatever we talk about, whether it's marriage, whether it's jinns, whether it's whatever it is, everything always comes back to. So he, because that's the asal of the religion. So yeah. the asal of the, even even religion. after that, bro, the she should have video as well. That was like the first one was okay, cool. It was a star. That one was the main course. Okay, that one was what like, solidified me in terms of yeah, I wanna practice my deen. So what was the dessert? Huh? What was the dessert? 
Oh, the dessert. Oh, dessert right now. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> nah, the dessert. I'll be honest with you. The dessert was, I think, Umrah. Subhanallah. I think Umrah was a dessert. Mashallah. Like especially that moment. Yeah, that moment when I don't know if you don't remember, but when it was dark and I just see the minarets and I was reciting the Quran on the coach. That that moment was the dessert. Subhanallah. Allah. Yeah. So listen, you we jumped quite ahead quite a bit there. Oh yeah, we leaped on quite a lot. So yeah. from then. When did you first come into contact with the Dawa offline? Offline, okay. So I must have been, we had a little group chat at the time. Me, Strides, Abdul Ghani, Bilal, a couple of us. It was very, very young. It's called Ikhwan? The Ikhwan? Yeah, Ikhwan. Ikhwan. Yeah, yeah. Like not not Ikhwan, Muslim. not them, man, but yeah. <laughs> just you know Ikhwan, I mean? brothers. Yeah, so a <laughs> bunch of, like, it was very, very young, actually. And we would go to one brother's house every week, every Wednesday. Bear in mind, guys at uni, guys are at school, guys are here, guys are here. Everyone would make a commitment every Wednesday to go to Camden at one brother's house and we would just play a recording of Thalath uh, al-Rasul. Everyone would bring the notepad and pen out and we would just learn in Tawheed together. Like That's how it started. And then from there, we went to a football. We had a football match. Me and Strides, he invited me to football. Mahboob. Yeah. Uh, that's that's going to take a lot of... Yeah, it's going to take a lot of time. He already knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mahboob. <laughs> but I still call him Mahboob. I call him both anyway, so it's fine. Um, yeah, me and Mahboob, because he messaged me on Instagram time back. Um, and he messaged me or I messaged him I can't remember anyways we ended up at football and then after football um, we went to go eat so as we went to go eat now Allah Mubarak I was like it's the first time I ever saw someone trying to pay for the whole bill SubhanAllah in my head I'm thinking yo where are you getting this piece from like you know what I mean <laughs> we're young but it's like he, who is it my yeah because you know like, from, from them days it's like you grow up in school someone telling you yo where's my 50p where's yeah you be for 50p yeah 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 you get <laughs> And now it's like, Ross, someone's trying to pay for the whole bill. And it's like, cool. I'm like, yo, what are you saying? He's like, and I said, what are you doing after? I'm like, nothing much. Like, I'm going to the office. I'm like, what office? He goes, oh, um, Dawa man and the brothers are there. I was like, okay, cool. He's like, you might as well come through. I was like, um, yeah, but ask them. And I don't know if you remember. He called you. So I'm with a brother called Nasser. He's like, cool. He's like, and you're like, yeah, come. And then that day. Did you know to, who he was back then? Yes. I don't think I was out. No, I wasn't I out. I met there. you one day before. You were in a red jumper. It was from Stad's library. Yeah, in, that's the yeah, first in, time I ever in, saw you. Um, yeah, in Clapham. Size, yeah, in okay, Clapham, yeah. yeah. You know that day when you came down, that was the day we recorded the series of me and Strides, right? Uh, Mahbub. Me? You, there was, we were recording the marriage series and you just took over and started like fixing the cameras. And no, no, you took my office. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get to that. I want to get to so, that. Wait, no. so you met Ustad before you met him? No, no, same time, same time. No, same, no, 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 no. It wasn't same. You're same time. Yeah, you're yeah, saying was, that was, you we, met him. We were at Ustad's place. And Try, uh, Mahbub was upstairs. I got the Ikhwa with me. Yeah, okay. he brought like there. 25 men. Yeah, even Ustad Yasin Munia was there that day. I yeah, remember, also two random brothers were sitting there as well that day, remember? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so basically, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, then, then we went to Twickenham where the office was, and then I, I walked in. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're well. I'm really sorry to interrupt the podcast, but I need to make a really important announcement. It's only going to take a minute, and it's really, really important. Guys, as you can see behind me, we have part of our studio. This is going to be the place where we're going to be doing da'wah, where we're going to be recording content to go around the world. People, inshallah ta'ala, are going to accept Islam after watching our videos. Some of them are going to leave behind lifestyles of haram. Some of them are going to come towards tawheed and sunnah. They're going to change their lives. You've been seeing on this podcast how many people have been affected and impacted by the da'wah over the previous years. Now we're trying to do things even bigger and better. But we are in need of funding. If you guys would like to be a part of this great movement that we're doing and you'd like to participate in the reward, then donate at the link below ASAP. In fact, if you can make a donation before you watch the rest of the podcast, we'll be very grateful. And then you will be with us, inshallah ta'ala, in the reward of all that we do. So click the link below. And then I, I don't know what it was. Imran was by himself that day and I see him struggling editing a video. <laughs> Imran was editing a video. Yeah. What do you mean? I used to edit. Are you talking about? Was, yeah, he was editing the video. So I saw. I used to edit. It. Who died? Yeah, I'm like, bro. Huh? Who died? Yeah. Bro, that's probably when you disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> oh my brother. Bro, something. Bro, twicker them days were the days, bro. I was there eight a.m. You, you were at eight p.m. You were, but I used to edit them days. Yeah, I really? yeah, it was actually it was actually. I remember every now and again on your little old MacBook Air, you'd bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You I saw it. Like it was on a, it was, it was on, a, it was on a Mac. Anyways, I'm like Iran, like yo, bro. By the way, I can edit videos. You know, use Premiere Pro. Let me, let me, let me do this. It's calm. I'm not even on a. I was just like, yeah, let me, just, let me just do this. I was like, I like it. I enjoy it. Then I don't even remember what video it was. 
I've done the green screen with the color correction yeah. and that. And then I think it was the sheet out one. I can't remember. Something like that. Yeah. And anyways, he really liked it, innit? And he's like, what are you saying? You can edit. Da, 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 da. He's like, you want to come work with us? <laughs> you get it? And then, yeah, by what, the time- What were you doing at that point in your life? Were you working? Were you studying? Or were you just kind of floating um, around? Who's looking for a job? No. No, I was working at a perfume shop. At the perfume shop. Yeah, yeah. I was working. At, I was seventeen. I was working at a perfume shop. <laughs> yeah, I was selling perfume, like at the actual perfume shop. Um, <laughs> but I had to leave because they never they never let me go Umrah at the time with my family, so yeah. I just cut. And then yeah, but, um, and then yeah, so I was just chilling chilling in the office that day because we were speaking about what kind of what it would entail, video editing, what what you guys require basically to get it. And then we ordered Pepe's. If you guys don't know, these men are sponsored by Pepe's. <laughs> You see, no, you know now it's a TikTok trend. No, Pepe trend. should sponsor us. Ah, you know it's a TikTok trend now. Really? Chicken and rice. This was six years ago or something. These men will get the chicken and rice, they'll open it up, put the garlic sauce all on top, this, that. <laughs> my favorite milk. These men put me on. They I should sponsor lie. us. Yeah, they should. They should. Rightfully so. I can't lie. Yeah, rightly so. But yeah, so yeah, that, yeah, that, that was the first real life interaction. You know, you're bringing back so many memories of that place, bro. Do yeah. you remember the ladybugs? The lady, uh, ladybugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And then we put our like, the lady that used to work there. What was her name again? Uh, Can't remember uh, then. I mean, we're gonna bleep it anyway. But yeah, and uh, they popped us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, not we got so, no, 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 there's there's this for that square foot, as in, for that for that space. No, I'm talking about the company bumped yeah. us. As in, if you look at yeah, you know that that square foot. Yeah, that was. We were paying like 18, this, this. This table yeah. would have just about fit in there. We were paying yeah. eighteen hundred pounds yeah. a month. You're paying this for the whole, name of the place, isn't it? This whole building we're paying two thousand one hundred fifty. Yeah. So for three hundred pound more, mm-hmm. it's basically like this is like eighty. That's this, ridiculous. That was like eighty yeah, percent of like. the price of this, and that was the size of probably that small library that we've mm. got in there. Yeah. Like that's the extent. And then we were told you get yeah. a parking space. We didn't get parking. That but I can't lie. Oh, you man, you man, you man, set levels. I tell you why. Right. It's only white people working there. The white working class man. And these uh, men are coming every day with thobes and bits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was making hot chocolate. The guy's looking like, what, what are you doing here, mate? I'm like, yeah, hot chocolate. Yeah, yeah. let's turn <laughs> on the rooms into a prayer oh, room. Oh, wow. We used, we used to make hot yeah. chocolate every you day. That? You got me onto hot chocolate, you know? No way. You know, uh, you, 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 know you know one thing that I really, really loved about Nasser Olay? Like, yeah, uh, keep that in mind. Okay, man. One thing I loved about Nasser Olay, like, he was a young brother really just Passionate about passionate, the dean, like whatever. Like when you when he when you worked for Sahih, mm. we couldn't actually afford to give you a proper wage. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. We're paying him like four bills a month yeah. like for working full time. Yeah. But he used to come in Still eight a.m. in me. the morning. Some days I'll leave at twelve a.m. or one a.m. and leave, go uh, home, well. get there for like six a.m. I can sometimes so, I would come into the office yeah. and he'd just be there with his hot chocolate. Editing. Well, I actually feel like crying thinking about it. No, 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 correct, man. Well, I really, yeah. well, I did, he did, he did, he did, well, I worked, man. And, yeah. for, and for the time back then, it was good quality stuff as well. Very good quality stuff. Yeah. Like the promos that, that, that we put the promo yeah. from Daha's one, uh, the uh, oh, Ak- cops, and there's a 100%. few. The uh, Aki Cup, you edited that yeah, as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that, oh, that was a throwback, man. Yeah, there was that. Uh, <laughs> we put your, your Aki Ops. Video, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the, the uh, what's it called? The uh, the heartbreak video Ooh. that we did. That one I was so funny. Yeah. Heart we put oh, a heart, heart, heart sold into that, so. and it didn't get a single sign up. Uh, we thought we were gonna sell by <laughs> Netflix, like. <laughs> no, but, so, yeah, that no, but honestly, well, like that, you know that that characteristic. Well, like, I wish a lot of brothers had it, in the sense where just willing to sacrifice just to be around the dean. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not to, I'm saying to be around us, but to be yeah. the concept of like that passion that. Energy, you know, and when I see that person in a young brother, it makes me motivated to want to kind of you know be there for that person. Yeah. But well, I alhamdulillah, man. So then, obviously, after that, um, you know, mashallah, Tabarak, he spent almost a year with us. Yeah, yeah. I see, I see, I see. Oh, working, working. Oh, yeah, yeah, working, working. Yeah, working we went yeah. to Dubai a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, you guys. A oh. couple of times oh, we went man. to Dubai. We. Enjoyed a yacht together. Oh, it was lovely. It was <laughs> sensational. I went downstairs to the little dinner. And Imran gave me one, two vouchers that come with a special stay. I'm yeah. seeing the chef cook up I'm like, yeah, spaghetti, please, sir. He's doing a mad thing, flipping it. I've never seen spaghetti flip in my and, life. And like, I'm how, how was Ramadan in Dubai? Oh, it was banging. Because now, obviously, obviously, we didn't get distant, but obviously, when we're not working with each other, yeah. you naturally don't see each other yeah, every day, much, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. then, obviously, we would we would see each other, but then there was that Ramadan yeah. where I was in Dubai with Gulad. It wasn't the first time, innit? it? Too much Khawanish times. Khawanish times. Khawanish times. So <laughs> so I remember we was at Kuala, we was having. Well, after Mecca Medina, 
And I've never been to Beit al-Maqdis, so I'm assuming Beit al-Maqdis is after Mecca Medina. But after the three holy sites, <laughs> like the best place where I have done Ramadan is Dubai. Yeah, yeah no, I can't ask Dubai, nice. Ramadan in Dubai is beautiful. Yeah, so we was there, wallahi, having the best Ramadan of our yeah, life. Yeah, no, Ravi's. I remember Ravi's. Ravi's. Oh, but, but here's the thing. Don't talk about In the Ramadan. last... Oh, man, it's not scary. Wallahi, it's not scary. Shut up, please. Wallahi, 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 shut down now. No it way. Wallahi, it's not scary. Shut up, please. Now, listen, listen, listen. So, the, so we went there originally. Nasser wasn't with us. It was me. Uh, it was supposed to be me and Jordan. Okay. So imagine me and Jordan go and uh, we land there and, we, and I take a nap. Next thing I know, I'm being woken up and there's a big, big man on top of me. Like, not literally huh? on top of me, oh. but like over me. Like, okay. it's good head. Yeah. I'm like, I swear, Egypt. I'm so baffed. I feel like I've seen a ghost. Not that ghost exists. But then he's like, yeah, I just I flew in and Jordan. Yeah, and Jordan like, knew about it. They planned it. Next thing you know, might as well tell Khadr to fly in. Yeah. So we called up Khadr. <laughs> oh, was that in. the trip when the quad bike got written off? <laughs> no. No, no, no. I wasn't, no, I wasn't there. Jet not, ski. Not, not quad bike, the jet ski. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Mm. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. I wasn't there. You did no, before was, you arrived. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't there. Okay. Let's just oh, say yeah, 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 yeah. Khadr let's almost, just killed, say, he almost killed Yeah, yeah I remember. No, 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 let's not mention any names, but let's just say phone calls had to be made. Uh -huh. Loans had to be taken. Uh -huh. <laughs> I feel like two or three bags had to get dropped that day. But that's the lesson. You know what I learned from that? Is in Ramadan. Focus on your ibadah mm. and not jet skiing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In Ramadan, Ramadan is the time to do ibadah. So yeah. that was a big reminder. You're saying you can't read Surah Nuh on a jet ski. Yeah. Say again. Yeah. <laughs> now look what happens here. Now we're like, you know what? Let's bring Nasir. Mm. So we're speaking to Nasir. He knows. Spontaneous. And these man, the whole life is basically, well, not a whole life, but these man are basically like, Salaam alaikum. How are you? Family good? I'm, we're saying Dubai tomorrow. <laughs> That's, that's literally what it was. Like, are you, uh, slow down, bro. It's no, but look, no, show them how true that is because we saw yeah. each other after over a year. Yeah. And how did our conversation go when we met? Literally, I met Emran literally like after, I don't know how long now, yesterday, <laughs> or the day before, was it day before yesterday? It's like four, four days, days ago. ago something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, four days ago. After like having a normal conversation, the first thing he said was, what are you saying? Are you on Dubai next week? <laughs> Standard, like standard. No, but that's the thing. Obviously, yeah. we're going to the good places there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now we're there, and I, what was it? Explain that. Like, that I Ramadan. can't lie, bro. It was it was really especially for me. The main thing was seeing like you can live a practicing lifestyle, still enjoy yourself, but still your your almost your entire day is dedicated to Islam. Do you get it? Yeah. And the, I can't lie. For me personally, I'm a big fan of like praying behind nice reciters because for me it increases my khushu I can't really pray behind someone that obviously it's, a, it's the words of Allah at the end of the day salah salah and we love salah but it's that you extra khushu yeah you enjoy it more yeah. you don't feel like your legs are hurting if someone's taking long etc so every masjid was banging and remember it was, it was on Sheikh Zayed Road there was a banging masjid um, towards the back roads yeah, it was when any masjid any masjid and all the masjid they have a nice sound system and that one masjid it was only two rows yeah. That Imam was right side surah to Ibrahim. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I can't remember the surah. But Bro, and we was emotional. It was emotional, that, yeah. Right? And it was two rows, yeah. and we was thinking, this just one random yeah. Imam. Man, he's even, got no one there. Even when it was time to break fast on Ramadan, I think they got almonds in between the dates. Yeah. It's not, they're not going one for no second, cheap options. Talk to them about the pink drink. Oh, the pink drink. The and, pink, and, and, yeah, and, and, yeah. and the date with the little yeah, white. I can't lie, it's spring, banging, spring, yeah. So, for Thor time outside. They've got like the sofra, which is the thing you put on the floor. And all the locals, like all the locals, people that are working, everyone's just sitting down. You're sitting with the builders. You're sitting with the you're builders. You're sitting with the yeah. businessman. You're sitting with the guy who cleans the, the streets. Same. Everyone's sitting together. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have this little pink drink. You drink it. They've got the, the yogurt there and they've got the dates with the nuts. And yeah, man, it's just a vibe. It's nice. Well, it's nice. And then, yeah, we'd, we'd go there and then, yeah, it's just go to nice places. Allahumma barik. And it's proper stuff. Okay, man, and the reason I mention this is because... You can have a nice Ramadan in uh, in the UK, well, like, but it's not like how it's not like being in a Muslim. I can't lie, for me, like this Ramadan Muslim. starts slow, man. But alhamdulillah, I, I, I recognize why. Do you get it, Akhi? This one thing I was speaking to Dean about in the car earlier, like I was telling him, obviously, like back then, and this, this is not even me being humble or anything, well, lie, I'm keeping it 100. Like back then, Akhi, I was, I was a lot more practicing than I am now. And um, some, I was. In our bucket house yesterday, and I was just sitting late night. I was just deep in it. I, I was like, "Why is it now that I feel? Why is it in this Ramadan that I feel the same passion that I do when I first started practicing and I deep to it?" And bro, it's like the reason why we become depressed is because we neglect repentance. And I even remember back then when I was going to classes and stuff. I remember um, uh, Ibn Qayyim that I mentioned in Madarin Salikin. He's talking about Toba. He said, "Man nazila fi manzilat tawbati." 
وقام في مقامها نزل في كل منزل الإسلامي. He said any person who descends onto the first stage or the stage or the station or the platform of repentance نزل في كل منزل الإسلامي. He descends onto all stages of Islam. Al-Islam, which means what? Islam will, be made, uh, Islam will be made easy for this individual. Not only that, um, just Tawbah in general. So for me, it was like, if all I've got to do is come with Tawbah and all my other trials and tribulations in life will be made easy for me, then then, then why, why am I not making repentance? And it was like, I found myself to be in a very dark hole at the time because I'll be on, as you know, I, I de-associated myself with brothers, like mm-hmm. even the area that I live in, to be honest, like it's just sheep, cow- not camels, sheep, cows. I live in the depth of <laughs> them size there. So I don't have a message in my area. It's a community center in my area. Like it, it went, it, time went by where I couldn't even pray Jummah in a message after praying in the community center. Some days it would go and it's closed. There's no Jummah today. Do you get it? Like, so for me, I found myself to be in a very dark hole because I was by myself for a very, 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 very long time. And obviously a few things happened for that. But um, alhamdulillah, things are clarified. Not, not even that, like just, just you know what I'm saying? When you're going through stuff, you don't really want to see no one and stuff. You know, you know one thing which I see is a constant pattern yeah. amongst brothers though. And we've, we've had this has come up a few times on, on in the Ramadan with the mandem as yeah. well, right? Is that... Well, I brothers, it's important when you're going through a dark time to reach out. Yeah. Shaitan will make you think, nah, I might get judged. Yeah. Maybe they're going to look at me this way, that way. It's not the same, yeah. whatever it might be. Even yeah. yesterday when we was after a lecture, we were sitting with yeah. two brothers in, in, the, in the library, in the, office, in, yeah. in the masjid. It's the same topic. Brothers, don't alienate yourself from yeah. the brotherhood. Like, look at this. The brothers even mentioned if a person travels on his own, he's a shaitan. Yeah. And if two people travel, they are two shaitans. Mm. The, if they, but if three travel, it's a rukbah. It is a traveling group. It's a party now. Yeah. So look at that. Even I'm not supposed to be traveling. I'm not supposed to be traveling alone. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be even traveling with two. I should travel with at least three brothers, yeah. including myself. Does that make yeah. sense? Okay, I, I, you have to yeah. be with brothers. I you have that. to be but with you the see, brothers. Imran, like at the time, yeah, when you're in that space, okay, and just just tell you a little story, okay, when you're in that space, it's like, you feel, I don't know what it is like. Even even the iman you used to have, or the, the level of knowledge you used to have, you don't find it beneficial at the time because you're neglecting your main obligations, or you're you're delaying your salah. Or this yeah. that. so Allah removes the the, the, yeah. the blessings that you once had. So, anyways, for me, it was like you feel guilty to repent, or it's like I keep going back. Why do I keep going back to repent for? Do you get it? You keep asking for the same thing, or you you would feel guilty to. Message someone or reach out to someone who's at a higher level of piety than you because it's like you know what in my situation at the time I was like whoever I speak to I'm gonna drag them down because of the actually the the bad habits I was getting back into like I was getting back into um, stuff that I was doing before and yeah. just finding myself in, in 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 the same loop that I was before practicing to keep it real like and actually like to sum it up it basically got to a stage where it was like I was seeing the mosque I was I was I was seeing the mosque the message to be a club for the pious when in reality it's a hospital for sinners. Allah, you say it, that again, Nasser. I was seeing the masjid to be a club for the pious, Akhi, when in reality it's a hospital for the sinners. Allah, Akbar. you get it, Akhi? So for me, it's like I forgot, I forgot about Tawbah. I forgot, I forgot about Wallahu Rizu and Yatawbah Alaikum. Allah wants to accept you for your repentance. I forgot about Illa man taba wa amanu amal amal salih and faulai kibud Allah sayyatim hasanat. Except for the one who believes, he repents and he does righteous actions for that for that person. Allah will exchange all of his good deeds, all of his all of his sins into good deeds. I forgot about. قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I forgot about say all my faith or transgress against himself by saying by committing evil deeds. Do not despair. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله from the mercy of Allah. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Allah forgives all sins. I forgot about the practical advice Allah gave after. We said وأنيبوا turn to your Lord and submit وأسلموا له. Do you get it? So والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشا فاحشة يا جيجر أخي. so for me I forgot about وخير خطائنا توابون the best of mistake uh, people who make mistakes are those who repent. أخي if, if 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 as humans we are made to make mistakes if we were not made to make mistakes شيطان would have no vacancy أخي. so there will be no job for شيطان and on a deeper note أخي like some of Allah's names and attributes like how can Allah be al غفار how can Allah be غفور الرحيم if there's no room for you to make mistakes. Which is forgiving and merciful. Forgiving and merciful. So how can he be a if? If if we make mistakes. 
if we don't make mistakes. It, yeah, 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 yeah. So not to say obviously we go out our way to say, okay, well, Allah is most forgiven. Let me commit sins. No, of course not. What I mean is actually like, um, when, when, when you find yourself. Shall I tell you something? I'm shocking. Yeah, you know the hadith and you all know this hadith, yeah? yeah. The Prophet yeah. he mentioned that a person who's traveling yeah. and, he, and he's got his camel, he's got his riding beast and he's got all of his supplies on there. If he loses it, he gets ready for death, right? Yeah. Because in the desert, if you lose your camel, you're going to die. Because your camel's got your food yeah. to feed you. It's got your water to give you to quench your thirst. And it's got your shelter to protect you from the harsh conditions of the desert. Yeah. So there's no food for days away. There's yeah. no water for days. Yeah. And there's no shelter for days. Yeah. So if you lost your camel, you're going to die. Yeah. You're not going to make it past the night most likely. Yeah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, a guy who loses that camel, who gets ready for death, if the camel came back to him, how happy would he be? Okay, he would be so happy, he'd think, I've got another chance at life. Yeah. Uh, you, you would think, I've got a second chance to live. Yeah. Now, the, the question I want to ask you is that, can you describe a moment of human happiness greater than that? As in, imagine a human's gonna die, and then he gets told, he gets told you got cancer, you're gonna die, uh, uh, in, in, you got a week, and then suddenly the cancer's gone. Mm. Like how happy would he? Of course. That this is you will struggle to find a moment of human happiness greater than that. Yeah. Okay. But then the Prophet said, Allah is happier mm. than that man when his camel comes back to him, when the slave of Allah makes repentance to him. Yeah. Allah is happier. Than that man yeah. when the slave comes back. Okay, that's mad. Subhanallah. You know, actually, that, that that's the main reason. What was the first but, point I mentioned? Akhi? But here's, here's the question though. Yeah. But why? Because. Because this is a question that Imam Ibn Qayyim yeah. asked. He said, What is it about the slave who's a sinner, mm. who just a second ago was a murderer, just a second ago he was a fornicator, mm. just a second ago he was taking drugs, just a second ago he was a shaitan? Mm. In a second, Allah is. Happier than him Than any moment of human happiness He said because Allah His essence Is to be generous Thanks. Allah likes to give yeah. He likes to give you What you want yeah. He likes yeah. to give you mercy yeah. He likes to make, answer your dua yeah. It's his essence He is He is what? It's al Karim. Yeah. The question here is though Can Allah reward you When you're behaving badly? Like do you reward people For bad behavior? No you don't reward people for bad behavior. If you reward someone for bad behavior, that's actually oppression. Yeah. If a parent gives a gift a child uh, gives the child a gift every time the child is, is disobedient, mm. that parent is actually an oppressor to the child. He's setting that child up for fail and failure. So due to Allah's justice, He doesn't give you His generosity when you sin. But Allah wants to give you His generosity. Yeah. That's his, his essence is to be generous. Yeah. His essence is to give, 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 give. But due to his justice, yeah. he withholds when a person sins. Now, when a person makes toba, Allah becomes happy because now he can start giving him again. Yeah. And just giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. Yeah. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's the thing, bro. Like for me, it's like, all of this came from because, and this is this is a reminder to anyone. First, me myself, first and foremost. First, that's why I'm mentioning it. Like I felt ashamed to repent, and the reason why I found myself in that dark hole and of neglecting everyone and being by myself is because because I neglected repentance. It's like the the, the, the taste of iman became foreign to me, mm. and then now in Ramadan I'm automatically feeling high and <laughs> feeling high in iman. It's like why. The reason why is because actually, like you're around righteous companions and everything else and you're doing good, which <laughs> then makes me think, and this was the advice I was given, if we live the rest of our lives like we're in Ramadan, then perhaps our akhirah is going to be Eid. Allahu Akbar. And that's what I really... I feel some. I really Man, James in this, nah, in this okay, episode, nah, deep it, though, okay. If we live the rest of our lives like we're in Ramadan, perhaps our akhirah will be Eid. So why, why does everyone feel good in Ramadan? Because you're doing what you're born to do. So, do you get me? So, right. yeah, man. I want to take it back a bit, yeah. Rewind yeah. a little bit. So, 
Sorry, it's got mad deep, mad quick, by the way. Sorry, guys, man. It's got to get, dark. Don't worry, it's about to get a lot deeper. No, it's light, yeah, That's what I'm saying. We're about to get a lot deeper. Don't worry. This is, uh, we're just dipping our toes right now. I'm about, to dive, <laughs> I'm about to dive in. Don't worry. Where are you about the to first question, <laughs> first question I want to ask yeah. you, uh, again, back to what, we, what, what he mentioned earlier, which is obviously when you were working for us. Yeah. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, it was a lot of it was, uh, you know, uh, we had a. Uh, you weren't getting paid a lot. Yeah. It was like a full-time wage. There was a lot yeah. of sacrifice you had to yeah. make. It was yeah. difficult traveling yeah. all the way from where you were. Most of the time on train, sometimes I would pick you up on, yeah. on, on my way to yeah. work. What was it that kept bringing you back? Like at that time, what was it? Because for, for a normal person, it would be like, bro, this is long. I'm not going to do this. But you stayed for a very long time through a lot of up and downs. And you worked thin. very hard. And you worked very, yeah. so It's not like you were just coming to chill in the office. I'm saying work yeah. like to the side because you said you had a passion for it and whatnot. What was it that kept bringing you back? I'm not going to lie to you. Whenever I was there, my iman was high. And it's because of ilm. It's the knowledge. Like, I'll be working, but I would just hear things in the background. I'll find myself unintentionally memorizing stuff. Random stuff. Did you get it? Do you remember when you unintentionally memorized... Allah Mabari, he unintentionally memorized some things from a tibia. Oh, that was that like six years ago. I think I still know that now. To be it was like a, it was it was you was editing <laughs> something. Go go go! Say it in your beautiful way. Go on. The one. Oh, فصلون في استحبابي ترديد الآية للتدبر قد قدمنا في الف في ال في الفصل قبله حث على تدبري وبيان موقعه وتأثر السلف به وروينا عن أبي ذر رضي الله عنه قال قام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بآية حتى يرددها حتى أصبح والآية إن تعذبهم فإنهم عبادك رواه النسائي وابن ماجة وعن تميم الداري رضي الله عنه أنه قرر هذه الآية حتى أصبح then it goes on but it was just about the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم constantly repeating the ayah into Adim Hum Fain Hum Ibaduk. So then let me ask you another question. Yeah. Yeah. Like you like question took yeah. us back, what bro? Okay, come on. Like. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it's about to get deep. Yeah. And then obviously, so we had those good times. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. And then we separate. Yeah. Why did that happen? Now, after that conversation that we had, it was a lot of miscommunication of things that could have been solved had we just had a proper conversation. As, genuinely that's all I feel it was It was miscommunication Because I never had really had anything in my heart It was just like My issues were like Why did we have to go down that avenue When we could have took this avenue That's all it was Obviously for other reasons With Yeah it's a bit more But with you guys Yeah it was, it was never really bad blood actually. Like as much as The number one The good outweighs the bad And the bad wasn't even bad actually. It was just one misunderstanding Do you get it? And with that actually, like I still don't you can't forget the good that someone's done for you, like without fail, Abu Bakr, you saying sometimes I catch train, Abu Bakr would pick me up every single morning without fail. Do you get it? He would pick me up all the time. The only times he wouldn't pick me up is, I don't know if he's ill or something, do you get it? Like he'll pick me up, take me to the office with, with them every single morning, we'd go on a car journeys, we'd listen to Quran together, do you get it? Like, those are legendary, those are legendary driving days. through Hammersmith. Yeah, man. Blasting the Quran out loud, everyone's subscribe. just staring. Yeah, we had a, a, yeah. a, 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 a big muck back yeah, then as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, um, wallahi, like, I, I feel like I've got to say this as well. Well, like Imran, like Akhi, Imran's done a lot for a lot of us, man. Especially me at the time, I was going for a very hard time. There was a point where Akhi, like things got peak, and I was even living with Imran for some time. Do you get it? And you op- he's one of the few people who opened his doors for me. Akhi, like, do you get it? And really allowed me to benefit. And it wasn't like I was just staying with him. Akhi, I was staying and benefiting as well. Do you get it? And this is one thing I want to put out. You can cut it out if you want, but I feel like, Wallahi, well, like for me, it's, I find it a bit weird when. People would attend the next class of someone who's who might, who might be a student of knowledge or however, however they may be. But you just met this person that you're learning from, and you call him Ustad straight away. When the amount of people that Imran has benefited, other than obviously if it if it just sticks to your tongue, etc., you don't even call him Ustad Imran when he's taught you everything that you know. After Allah, so I feel like people gotta give Imran his flowers, man, because Allah he's he's helped a lot of us, like. Un, an, an unimaginable amount of Allah, man. You, get, you can get the dust, throw it in my face, get the astro turf act, you get me? But yeah, Akhi, man, I feel like I've got to make the statement here, man. Everyone, Akhi, Allah, Abu Bakr, Sa'ad, Gulayd, like you might show me a lot of love, Akhi, man. You know what I mean? So uh, I do appreciate a lot, man, Allah. You know, you can't go without thanking the people, man. You get me? Allah, Akhi, we all of thanks to you, Akhi, man. Allah, the one you've 
one thing about you, many things. You're a loyal person. Mm. That's one thing. Or like you're a very loyal person. And if Nasser loves someone, he loves them. Or like he'll go out of his way for them. If there was ever a time where we didn't go out away for you, I'd be very no, sorry. No, 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 because I can never say that there was never a time where I needed you to be there and you weren't. Mm. I can never say that I ever heard that Nasser was chatting about me or saying something. If anything, I only know situations where you didn't even tell me, but you were defending me. Yeah. And I ask Allah to defend you from the hellfire because of that. Amen. I mean, how does it feel to be back? Man, so I'll tell him about how much you guys pay me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm about to fall on this chair twice now, you know. Nah, well, life feels good, man. I can't lie. Like, you know, actually, some people when you link up with them after a long time, it's like it takes a bit of while to break the ice again. Mm. But when it's love, it's love, actually, man. Yeah. You know what I mean, bro? It's like, and I feel like the reason for that is because it's it's beyond just disagreement. So it's beyond just mm. you know human emotions. It's it's because we have the same basis, actually. Yeah. Like, it's Imagine. the understanding of Islam. You know, with um, and, 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 and you, you know, there's something. <clears throat> look, sometimes brothers may beef. Yeah, but we're brothers. It was never beef, by the way. Just yeah. to get no, I'm just, no, I'm just mentioning as a yeah. point. Like, as in, sometimes you may like me and a bucket every week. There must be something we get into. Mm. We got into it just in the previous podcast. Not going into it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that. My point is that, but you know what it is. It's like it gets to a point where. As you said, the good outweighs the bad. Yeah, 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 bro. That's and that's so. the I was telling you, we're allowed to fulfill the bainakum, right? Yeah, we're allowed to fulfill the bainakum. Yeah, don't forget the virtue or the bounty that Allah has put between you both. Yeah. Don't forget the good times, man. And you know, yeah. there's. I just want to mention a story between Muawiyah and Ali radiallahu anhu, man. Both noble companions, and you know they had an issue between them, and one of the kuffar, the Roman emperors, he tried to exploit it. So he said, "Listen," he said, "I heard." You know, you and Ali are basically, you have an issue. Don't worry, I'll send my army to you as a support. You can top Ali. And it's just my service to you, kind of thing. I'm just trying to help you out. He's trying to basically, he f- it's all an opportunity to divide the Muslims. So Ma'awi, he wrote, wrote a letter back to him. He said, Me and Ali are brothers. And two brothers that are just quarreling. We are two brothers that just got into a quarrel. Mm. But you, are kafir and an enemy of Islam. And if you send me a letter again, I'm going to send an army to you. We were so big that when the first man enters your Roman kingdom, the last man would have just left me. The point is that sometimes we may get into it, but these are just brothers that are quarreling. The same way when you quarrel with your brother, your blood brother, it's not, it's, it's, you're, you're all coming back because mm. you're tired by blood. Does that make sense? Yeah. But we're tied by what is greater than blood, which is Iman. You must have dropped the line. Right? Iman. No, come on. Iman. No. Blood. <laughs> blood. Blood is sticking on water, but Iman is sticking on blood. Hey. Well, I can't lie. I'll, I'll be honest with you. As long as I'm alive, I'm so happy. I'm seeing all my young brothers will lie. You, Dean, Jordan. I feel like I'm being spoiled. Yeah, yeah. No, and this one's nice because it's the old and the new. It's the old and the new. Got the bill, mashallah. <laughs> it's, the 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 yeah, yeah. it's the old and the new. It's the old and the new. Real throwbacks, man. I was, even now, as you speak, I was just thinking about when we was on a jet ski, screaming. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> ah. <laughs> 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 now, nah, so before we conclude here, yeah, I want to show you something. I want to get your opinion on it. Because obviously you're a mashallah, you know, into the videos, cinematography, so whatnot. So did you see the, the better club thing that we did? Did you see it? I saw the Instagram page, but I haven't seen the <coughs> videos. He's, he's trying to show you the promo so for it. We made a little promo for it. Yeah. That's what I showed it to you quickly. Get your uh, thoughts on it. So get your reaction live on camera. Yeah, it's going to be launching very, very soon for the mandem. And uh, yeah, let's see what your thoughts are of the uh, visuals. Wait, sorry, by the club, what is that? What's the details of it? You're going to see it. You're going to see it. Like it kind of, no, no, no. It kind of, men- it kind of alludes to it, okay, but we're, we're going to do right. a big reveal. Yeah, Don't worry. Gone, mandem, gone. mandem. Don't worry. It's coming. No sisters. No allowed. sisters allowed. Inshallah. Right. Ready, yeah? <laughs> What does it take to be a man? Focus, principles, sincerity, strength, honesty, knowledge. We start out in a state of ignorance, then we reach a stage where it's time for boys to become men, to excel, live up to the title. We are ambassadors of the great men that came before us, the Battle Club, dealing with mental, physical health, relationships, finances, and most importantly, faith. 
place for men only. It's time to grow. Learn how to become the best possible man you can be. Allah gave victory to the companions at Badr when they were weak. Now Allah can give you victory at the Badr club when times are peak. But indeed, Allah did secure you at Badr when you were utterly weak. Remain then conscious of Allah so you might have cause to be grateful. The Badr club. Sign up now and become a member. Become a man. What's that saying? What's going through your mind? Right I now? was watching Paco Rabanne or something. <laughs> Allah, Allah, the price gone up. Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Allah, Allah, that's proper stuff, man. Yeah. yeah, 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 man. Yeah, bro, I'm with it. Who filmed it? Khalifa? Yeah, 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 yeah come on, man. Yeah, man. Like, how can I give my stat advice, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm Muslim Bilal directed it. I love it. Come on. Akhil Allah is amazing, bro. Seriously. Yeah, we're yeah, going yeah. to do another promo yeah. in Turkey this time, inshallah. Oh, but this time. Not, not, not that turkey that you know. Some of you are thinking, of, you know, different turkey. What are they? What are they thinking? Turkey, turkey, isn't it? Syria, turkey, isn't it? Some of you might think, right? No, turkey. yeah, not that turkey. We're, turkey. we're not going Syria, turkey. We're going. By this turkey, time, turkey. we need to take the original brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Before we conclude, because you know we have gone, so we're about forty minutes into it, inshallah. And we like to keep these episodes short because it's Ramadan. We want you guys to benefit from the Quran as much as possible. I don't think we can uh, let Nasser go before we hear that. Legendary voice. Nah. Surat al Ahzab. Whatever. No, no, I'll let you choose. No, no, we need to hear. We, this is a request. Surat al Ahzab, Idris Abkar. Let's throw it back all the uh, way back. That's, that's, that's too much of a throwback. Let me give you something new, inshallah. Go on. Anything, inshallah. Amen. يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء ويجعلكم خلفاء الأرض أإله مع الله قليلا ما تذكرون أمن يهديكم في ظلمات البر والبحر ومن يرسل الرياح وَمَنْ يُرْسِلُ الرِّيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِهِ أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ تعالى الله عما يشركون أمن يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده ومن يرزقكم من السماء والأرض أإله مع الله قل هاتوا برهانكم إن كنتم صادقين قل لا يعلم من في السماوات والأرض الغيب إلا الله وما يشعرون أيان يبعثون بل ادارك علمهم في الآخرة بل هم في شك منها بل هم منها عمون قال الذين كفروا إذا كنا ترابا وآباؤنا إنا لمخرجون لقد وعدنا هذا نحن وآباؤنا من قبل إن هذا إلا أساطير الأولين قل سيروا في الأرض فانظروا كيف كان عاقبة المجرمين ولا تحزن عليهم ولا تكن في ضيق مما يمكرون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين بارك الله فيكم فيك بارك الله خالع It's good to have you back, man. Yeah, my God, Pleasure. Thank you guys for having me, Allah, man. No worries, man. I appreciate it, man. Pleasure is all ours, Aki. Trust me. Trust me. We say, Hey, let me go. Let's go. Spontaneous ones, huh? I can't let me have to jump in as well if you want to own it. Hey. What tonight? I'm joking, man. Don't play with me like that. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Tonight. Right. Let's just do it. Allah, let's do it. Let's see how it goes. Allah, let's do it. Let's see. Let's see. Your family. I told you, look. These are nuts. Let's go to Dubai right now. The same. Look at these, man. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Listen, brothers and sisters. Hopefully, inshallah, you guys benefited from that episode. If you did, then we would like to request, inshallah, from the bottom of our hearts, dig deep into your pockets. If you can, donate towards this da'wah. You've seen the effect that it's having on these brothers that we're bringing on this show, uh, on you know, brothers and sisters all around the world. We're actually even thinking to do a live episode where we get you guys, the viewers, to call in and explain and talk a little bit about your experience with the da'wah, how the da'wah has affected you, 
So if you would like to be a part of that, then email us at session at gmail.com and tell us a little bit about your story, how the da'wah has impacted you and potentially we'll get you on to one of these episodes. We'll do a live one throughout the night, inshallah. Let us know if that's something that you want to see. Other than that, the GoFundMe link is in the description. There's account details there. If you guys want to set up standing orders, you can do so. If we can get 10 people to, to set up a standing order for £100 a month, that is the rent for the studio covered. For the studio floor that we use for the studio, that's the rent covered. So if you're able to do that, we'd highly, highly appreciate it, inshallah. Other than that, we'll see you guys Just on the next. You said the whole place is 2000 something. No, so we use one floor for the studio. The rest so we the pay rest, for out of our own the pockets. The rest we pay for it ourselves. Yeah, the rest we pay for it out of our we, own pockets. We run other things. We right? only fundraise for that which we use for the Dawa, which is, you know, the Nasir sessions. Obviously, the rest we use it for the Dawa is what we use it for our own stuff as well, which is why that we pay for out of our own pockets. But this studio floor, uh, we pay 1000 Uh So if we can get 10 people setting up standing order for £100 a month, that's that sorted, inshallah. So with that said, We'll see you guys on the next episode of Ramadan with the Mandem. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.